As I'm sure you know, there are plenty of beautiful gemstones out there of varying shapes and sizes. But there's one category of stones that teaches us it's what's on the inside that counts, the geode. If you're a rock nerd like me, your fascination with geology and gemology probably began with geodes. And of course you are, and of course it did. An unassuming stone with a hidden surprise inside, they're basically nature's wonder ball, but instead of mediocre candy, you'll find quartz crystals, agate, and some rarer cases, opal. But these amazing hidden gems don't just form overnight. It can actually take these glittery microchasms, thousands, even millions of years to form. It all begins with the creation of a cavity within a rock formation, and there are a few ways that can occur. The most common way these spaces are formed is not by excessive consumption of candy, but by the water vapor and carbon dioxide that gets trapped inside streams of lava and magma. Since the CO2 and water vapor are both gaseous, they create spaces inside the molten rock that gets trapped as it cools. These spaces also form in underwater volcanic eruptions. The immediate contact between the ocean water and the super hot lava causes the outside layers of magma to cool much faster than the inside layers. The resulting pressure of the quickly cooled outside layer on the molten inside layer of the rock causes ruptures where the molten rock can leak out, leaving behind an empty shell of now solid igneous rock. A third and less violent way these spaces can occur is within sedimentary rock. Over an extreme time, layers of sediment are packed on top of each other, but not all the organic materials swept up in this process will turn into sedimentary rock. Occasionally, pieces of wood, coral, and other minerals can get trapped in the mix and may wither away after the sedimentary rock is formed around it, leaving behind a cozy little spot for crystals to grow. In all these cases, the resulting cavity may appear to be encased in a completely solid stone, but the outer shell is actually porous on a microscopic level, allowing groundwater or rainwater to seep into the rock, bringing a whole host of minerals along for the ride. The water is just passing through, but it leaves behind these minerals that, over time, begin to line the inner walls of the cavity. As these minerals settle down, they begin to stretch their proverbial legs and form all kinds of crystal shapes. Now, the formation inside the cavity varies depending on the type of rock. For instance, you're more likely to find quartz crystals inside of igneous or volcanic rock, and silica is more likely to form within a sedimentary rock. The gemology laymen and laywomen out there mostly associate geodes with quartz crystals of either the milky or translucent variety or the deep purple amethyst. The two have the exact same molecular structure, but the iron impurities in the amethyst give it an amazing purple color that would have certainly made Prince swoon. She wore a bag. Berry beret, the kind you find in a secondhand store. Amethyst has been unearthed all over the world, but the finest quality amethyst is found in Brazil, Siberia, Mexico, and the US. And some of the largest geodes ever discovered are amethysts. And even agate geodes can contain amethyst crystals. Now I'm sure you've noticed me throwing out the word agate a few times in this video, and you may be wondering what I'm talking about. The difference is in the crystal structure. These layers of agate chalcedony create bands with different impurities within the geode, resulting in multiple bands that look similar to the sedimentary rock we were discussing earlier. The difference here is each band contains a microcrystalline structure. Now, you may be wondering about the difference between a geode and a thunder egg. Both form in similar ways with similar internal crystals, but the main difference is in the formation. As we discussed, geodes are formed from mineral deposits that coat the inside of a cavity and form in layers, while a thunder egg formed from silicon dioxide layers that don't necessarily originate from the perimeter of the cavity. Did you happen to form from mineral deposits seeping into a porous rock cavity formed by CO2 gas trapped inside molten rock? I didn't. But hey, let us know in the comments. And while you're there, don't forget to like and subscribe. For more information on the topics we discussed today, check out the links below. Thanks for watching, guys.